Welcome to the Mysteries of Rango Togawa. The first episode of sorts, the first mystery, in what seems to be planned to be a series of uh, mystery visual novels starring the titular Ranko Togawa. Murder on the Marine Express. This is a visual novel released by 1564 Studios, released on Steam July 30th, 2021. Wow. And from what I get, what I'm getting from the uh, Steam page, it's more of a kinetic visual novel, but but with uh, potential side content and side conversations available to sort of flesh out the world and the situation at hand as we progress through the story. Steam page tell us, tells us that the story takes place in five chapters. And let's say if you go to chapter select, yeah, we can see chapter one. And the story stars the uh, titular uh, Ranko Togawa and her friend Astrid. Riding... Uh, students at the uh, prestigious St. Joachim Academy for Elite Girls. Riding the uh, new Marine Express submarine train, running along the ocean floor from California all the way to the Japanese coast. But alas, uh, the most po beloved and popular professor in the academy turns up dead. And more victims follow. It's up to our uh, titular uh, protagonist, Ranko, to investigate, uncover the truth, and prevent any further murders from happening. I'm just going to go back in and chapter select and get things underway. How do we let this happen? Uh, calm down, please. You want me to calm down? We have another body right here. How many more does that scumbag need to be happy? You gonna sit through everybody being killed one by one? Good day, Mr. Killer. How do you do, Mr. Killer? Would you like to stab me with your knife? Nope, no way! I'm gonna leave right now, and I'm gonna find that bastard myself. When I do, I swear they're going to regret everything they've done. Would you hurry up, please? Don't be like that. They're not gonna leave without us. We just can't for the life of me understand how you need to visit the toilet so many times when it's not even noon yet. How can you store that much liquid in a body so small? Ranko! What? Humans have to excrete the waste we produce. There's no need to feel embarrassed about it. I'm just saying, I've never met anyone needing to do it in as many installments as you. <laughs> Wait, would you please stop talking about it in such a loud voice? You're always so fussy about the little things. Honestly. <laughs> Guys, we are here. Where were you? Astrid just can't stop me. Ah, Ranko! Sorry for being late. Miss Togawa, would you please join your group already? The train is about to depart, and we don't have time for your little shenanigans. Huh. Is everybody here? Frank, be useful for once. Help me count the girls. Uh, yes. Be useful for once, harsh. That's a party pooper if I ever saw one. There's no, need to be, there's no need to be like that. We're gonna have some fun. Lena? She's not that bad. She's just worried about us. Yeah, but she could at least relax a bit when we're outside of school. I wish she was a little more like your homeroom teacher. He's so popular amongst the girls at the academy. <laughs> and here he is. Oh, look at him. Ah, hi, Reen. Wonderful. Can you get the girls from our class? It's time to load the baggage. Yes, of course. Wow, talk about being over-familiar. I understand, though. I read is such a kind and reliable girl. It's kind of normal to ask her to do these types of jobs, knowing all their classmates like her. Erica, could you help me look for everyone, please? Um, well, maybe not all her classmates. See you later, guys. Later. 
All sophomores' attention, please. Please come and collect your information brochures. Let's see. St. Joachim Pre Preparatory School was, select was selected to enjoy the maiden voyage of the new submarine train which connects the West Coast with Japan. A tour trip offering scenic views of the marine life in, in the ocean depths. Also introducing thematic activities and luxury food along the journey. Knowing how wealthy and influential the families of St. Joachim's students are, I cannot but wonder if the decision came from the school itself as an educational trip, or if somebody pulled a few strings to indulge a whim of their daughter. Ah. Highly possible. Just happy we managed to get a room just for us in the cabin allocation raffle. And who should you be thanking for such an honor? You, oh graceful queen of the toilet. Ah, oh, goodness, maybe I still have time to find another roomie. I'm indebted to you, my lady and master. I plead for your mercy. <laughs> That's better. Ooh, phone icon? Marinette? Contacts? Okay. Her parents are world-class doctors. Oh. Grumpy girl who just can't stand injustice. Astrid Larson? Sweden! Oh, so this is an international academy. That's cool. For the rain, but perceptive girl. She comes from a rich Swedish family of notable fame. Oh. Irene Baker, UK. Kind and lovable. Classmate of Lena. Rumor has it she is having an affair with Mr. Shepard. Well. Lena Hastings? Friend of Irene. She's a little shy. This is her first year at St. Joaquin, so she doesn't have many friends yet. Oh. Frank. Ooh. Home room teacher for the sophomores. A lovable softy who lacks the drive of his colleagues. Let's see. Erica Bayland? Hmm. Yep, American. Fast made of Irene and Lina. She's kind of unsociable, though Irene is trying to get along well with her. Catherine Glass. Freshman and, freshman and member, member of the Wildcats. Da -da 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 -da. She's a snob who is always looking down on others. Katya Svetlova. Ah, because they all because they all do the thing. Hmm. Freshman member of the Wildcat. She likes to stand out and attract everyone's attention. Mau Mau? Ah. Freshman member of the Wildcats. Inferiority complex toward a big sister. Lauren Shepard. Hmm, teacher for the freshman at St. Joaquin. Rumor has it that he may be having an affair with Irene. Oh dear. Oh? Seniors? Madeline LaSalle, senior at St. Joaquin, she's the president of the student council, is a firm and earnest personality. Ah, home teacher for the seniors, and the one in charge of the trip. Strict, but loves her students. She looks very tired. Spike? Oh, we've not... Oh, in the hall, you look charming. Famous athlete who has won lots of tournaments and many sports. Skull. Wildcat. Appropriately themed. Oh, Miss Marble. Greetings, this is the general chat for the trip. Please use it to report any related issues. You can also use this chat to talk about your experience and to share pictures with the rest of your peers. Be respectful to other alumni and don't waste your time staring at your phone. I'm serious here. Confiscate the phone of anyone participating in improper behavior, so think twice before doing so. That being said, let's try to have a great time. It's going to be a long trip, so make the most of it. Thank you kindly for your attention. Regards, Je Jessica Marble. Thank you for this reenactment of the Ten Commandments. For being the... For being the... Playing the clown, you're going to be the first little one to lose their phone. No! Rip. It's a me. Is that, uh... Is that you, Clarice? Uh. Okay. Always oh, with that chip on your shoulder. You could spare these kinds of lame skits if you were to just be a good child for once. Just no having fun with you. Okay, first year's already in. If anyone is here, you could board too. Finally! I can't wait to see the fish from underwater! Oh no, it's a long trip. I think we'll be yawning in no time. 
Number one, I'm sure this will be a really interesting trip. If you say so. What sort of untoward horrors will we see on the ocean floor? Let us begin. Okay, close up the closet, check. The rooms aren't exactly big, but we have every essential commodity here. I can't believe we're inside of a train! The route is longer than traveling by plane. I have to make sure the passengers are, have everything they, ne they might need. But I didn't find any scuba gear in the closet. I wanted to go greet the crabs this afternoon. What happens if the train leaves you behind? Eh, <laughs> mid-journey. There's no, there's no scuba gear, you dork. How do you expect to go swimming when we are surrounded by a glass tunnel? Huh? How are you going to breathe if there's, if there's an emergency? And what if the tunnel gets flooded? The train is ready to keep going in amphibian mode. We're only using the tunnel for aerodynamics and security reasons. You wouldn't be asking so many stupid questions if you had you read the darn brochure. Oh, bummer. I want to go out and put starfish in my hair like mermaids do. I'm sure we'd find much more intriguing things at the ocean floor. <laughs> Well, for now, let's start by going out of this room. Just thinking about spending more time here with you is making me wish to be eaten by a shark. Or two. Ah, those best friend things. Uh, seems like there are some people in that corridor. And those there, there are sockeye salmon. They move so fast! Sockeye salmon are born in rivers and travel to open sea where they are ready to when they are then when they are ready to migrate. Once they start maturing, they get their unique red hue and swim through hundreds of miles across the norm northern Pacific. Then they come back home to breed and end their life cycle. Are you observing the fish? You can see the ones that live closer to land from here. This train is amazing. I expected it to be kind of cramped, but it's actually pretty spacious. We just left the station and we already saw lots of fish. It was like this most of the time. So some really cute ones too. I wonder if this train bothers them. The sight of a giant metal snake running through the, their habitat might be frightening to them. London proud. Oh, I never thought of that. They say Gretel Thunder supervised the project and gave her approval. Wow, that is eco-friendly for sure. Gretel Thunder? Gretel Thunder? Going from the World Environment Organization? A construction project now to meet her criteria on environmental impact regulations as they go through the shredder. My, that's a lot of power. Can't believe such a young activist ended up in such a position. Well, it's not like there were any other options available. Someone to take charge after the 50th wave of... Cr oh, whoa, okay. World War III... The Jovian invasion and the zombie invis- <laughs> Yeah, 2021 was an intense year. Yeah, goddamn. Well, that actually happened? No, it didn't. Please go study your history books, all of you. <laughs> I, I'm ashamed to admit you had me going there for a minute. Then I remembered. Then I remembered. Yeah, we lived through 2021. It sure feels like all that happened in 2021. <laughs> the view is really gorgeous. I can't believe we were able to behold the depths of the ocean from inside a train. This trip could be a wonderful chance to learn more about marine biology. But don't forget that you are here to enjoy yourself and make good memories with your friends. Absolutely. Look! Look at that fish over there! It has such a weird shape! Uh, where? That one over there! That is just a floating trash bag. Uh, oh? What about that one over there? The delicious looking, the delicious looking one! I feel equally worried and fascinated by your way of classifying fish. But well, I think I should be going. I have to keep an eye on Frank before he gets himself into hot water with Miss Marble again. See you at lunch. Later, Mr. Shepard! 
We're familiar again. Hmm. Howd. Are you okay, Lena? You seem a little bit, you seem a little down. Oh, it's nothing. It's just my sister would have loved this trip. If I remember correctly, then a sister passed away a couple of years. Oh, I'm sorry. It must be hard when someone dear to you isn't there anymore, especially when you'd like to share a moment with that person. What's more reason to enjoy the voyage? You should have a good time for her, too. Why don't, why don't you observe the fish with us? Then we'll eat the ones that look the tastiest. Please stop thinking about eating every animal you see. This is not a fish buffet. But we're going to order the ones we want to eat later, right? This is not a lobster restaurant. This is not a seafood restaurant, Astrid. We have to choose fast if we don't want to miss out on the best ones. I don't think that's how the meals here work. Thanks for cheering me up. I'm sorry for being such a spoil sport. No, it's okay. Please, perish the thought. You aren't a spoil sport. I know. When Renko yells at me and I start feeling down, thinking about Bloomins always makes me smile again. Bloomins? They're famous characters in my home country. When I think about them, it reminds me of their adventures and all my worries fly away. I'm sure they will help you too, Lena. Just like they do when Renko bullies me. Would you please stop using me as an example? I always take some pins from my collection with me. I'll give you one each so the Bloomins can bring you happiness too. Oh, so cute! Thank you, Astrid! Here, take one, Irene. Wow, thank you! Astrid is Bloomin's biggest fan. She might even live in the official Bloomin's Museum, for all I know. Not yet. Finland's HQ says there's still a few small things to sort out before they will grant us a full license. I don't know how to feel about that answer. Ah, oh, how cute. The dorky quartet are all friends. That's sweet. Huh? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> you lot can take a quick dip out there, just so we can be spared of your sappy acting. Jeez, here they are. There are lots of clownfish in the sea. I'm sure they're missing you. That's right. But clownfish live on the Southeast Asian side of the ocean. There isn't any around here. Hear that? That's smart ass with her nerdy facts. Don't think we didn't see you follow Mr. Shepard like a dirty lapdog. Makes me sick to look at you, constantly trying to get him to notice you, even just the tiniest bit. I don't do that. Oh, Mr. Shepard, please hug me. I'm drooling over you. I'm so desperate. <laughs> okay, that's enough. All of us already find you unbearable, but now you're going a step too far. Is that so? Are you really trying to say this... Trying to say this biatch isn't following Teach everywhere? Who knows what she's trying to do to him when they're out all alone? True, there's some rep rumors about her having a relationship with Mr. Shepard, but it's Irene? I don't know if she likes to teach like that, but she's not the type to do that stuff at all. But you're way smarter than this, Togawa. I'm disappointed to see that you are friends with this jerk, and now you're even defending her. It seems like you just need, like you lack as much of a brain as she does. You think so? Well. Nobody knows more about being brainless than you. I'm afraid you and I are quite different. You're not even on my level. Biatch. Oh, you're right about that. We wildcats are a gazillion times better than pitiful lowlives like you. <laughs> that face, oh god. Astrid, did you, bring, did you bring your blooming chainsaw by any chance? I think it's time for some cat sticks. Calm down, please. Lost it, get out of my nerves so hard. Don't pay any attention to those three. President! They are quite the impudent bunch for freshmen, but they are all bark, no bite. Don't fall for their provocations. They're a bad thing I read. They can't go saying that stuff about her. Baker, I don't know what your relationship with Mr. Shepard is, but it'd be better for you if you didn't spend so much time with him. If they're only messing with you out of jealousy, it'd be better to keep some distance from Mr. Shepard. Save yourself the trouble. Hmm... Won't just stand around here, use this time to explore the train. Once we're ready soon, then we'll begin with the activities. Try to make the most of your time here on board. What's her problem? There's no need for a lecture like that. I thought she was going to stand up for you. No, she's right. I better stop spending my time with Mr. Shepard, it's just all my fault. But... So, why don't we get back to observing the fish? I'm sure we'll spot some rare ones now that we're a little further out. Maybe we could even see one of those sashimi Ranko was always talking about. Yeah, yeah, look. 
<laughs> okay, no, I'm too exhausted to explain. Let's just let that one go. <laughs> okay, the dynamics are precious. I'm enjoying them. Little scene transition. What's it been? I'm a little hungry after all that fish gazing. Maybe I'm spending too much time with Astrid? A dummy only thinks about food and bloomins. On rare occasions, she does so simultaneously. To a concerning degree. Anyway, I hope the food here lives up to expectation. Now let's continue having a pleasant time on this trip. You were thinking about food right now, weren't you? I <laughs> it's written on your face. Looks like I'm not the only glutton aboard. Damn you and your sharp senses. Thankful service suit. I'm a little hungry myself. Oh? Why can't we go to the dining car yet? I'm hungry. Please kindly wait for your turn. There's not enough room for that many guests at once. If you're in the second group, you have to wait a little. But I'm such a letdown. I thought this was a luxury train. You have to understand that we're a very large group of people, and they have neither enough space nor staff to take care of us all at once. Instead of wasting your time complaining, maybe you could look for other things to do. Enjoy the ocean view. Plan your afternoon schedule and make some progress with your readings. If you're that bored, I brought some textbooks with me. We could look over the course syllabus and review what you should already know. I'm glad we have such a capable and organized president. He's so dependable. Long live our president. Ah, thanks. I'm far from being any Shirley Chisholm, but I'm still delighted knowing I, knowing I can still be of help to my peers. She's pulling your leg, Wiz. We're on vacation, so take it easy, Greasy. She's no fun at all. I am. I'm fun. I... am I? You have the entire trip to figure it out. Oh, no. She's trying her best, though. Uh, greetings, ladies. Oh, hello there. My name is Spike Johnson. I'll be your steward for the voyage. Today's menu is a seafood salad. Followed by a main course of salmon with Dijon sauce or lobster thermidor. Your choice. Wow, everything looks so delicious. Our food is always fresh and high quality. If you wish, you can request any fish you see by the window. We'll serve it to you for your next bit of work. <laughs> they actually do that? <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Somebody please get me out of here. Also, fun! <laughs> oh, that's a stage there. Someone's gonna someone's gonna sing karaoke. That's a stage there. And these are your dishes. Please call for me if there's anything you need. Shall we start? Bon appetit! Food is delicious, as expected. The salad offers a wide range of flavors. The salmon comes with a mild sauce that matches the taste of that fish perfectly. So if there's anything ruining this delightful luncheon, it's to be the chatting of our hateful neighbors. Hey, you sit next to her in class. Does that creep you out now she's always following Mr. Shepard around? Yeah, I'm sure she's already invited to teach to her room so she, so she can jump on him. Oh no. That bimbo takes any chance she can, she can get to cling to him. Well, it seems Teach ditched his pet this time around. I'm sure she's crying her little heart out right now. Things probably haven't gotten out of hand yet because he's such an honest gentleman. But you can't trust that minx. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hey, we can hear you. <laughs> hey, you dolts. Pass that salt shaker on the cart. Leave it with those more worthy of it. Ah, uh -huh. go. Oh no! Sam must have taken a lot of self-restraint. Look on your face, I am most sure you're going to give them hell for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm so proud of you. It looks like you're finally learning to control your bad temper. The context I'm assuming here is that you just slam the salt shaker down right in front of them, angrily. Don't get ahead of yourself, you might change your mind in a few seconds. Huh? Ah! <laughs> what have you done this time? Just loosen the salt shaker a little bit before giving it to them? 
You know what? Fair enough. Good deal. Now their meal will taste as bad as talking to them feels. You were absolutely hopeless. Why could you just let it go? It's called poetic justice, and it's the only thing that gives me strength to endure everyday life. <laughs> I am powered by spite. <laughs> Don't be so overdramatic. I'll apologize to them later. Absolutely not. They deserve that. Especially after saying all those nasty things about you. If we act as a consequence, it's time they learned their lesson. You don't have to worry about me. I'm used to their verbal abuse. Those scoundrels reminded me about Mr. Shepard. <laughs> when you were with Teach before, it seemed like he was planning to join us, but then he just went off with some of the seniors. Irene actually likes Mr. Shepard. I hope she isn't upset about being stood up. Uh... Hmm. Yikes, Irene and Lena are staring at him too. Guess I, I can guess what they're thinking. Need something to change up the mood here. Stat! How are you doing, girls? Perfect timing! Hi, Mr. Brown! The food here is delicious! Glad to hear. A chance to eat such tasty dishes doesn't come by often. Did you eat yet, mister? Some of the food is still being served, so I'm taking the chance to look around and check everything's all right. By the way, why were those girls screaming before? Made them no mind. They have no control over their volume. <laughs> I, I, I love her expressions. That's delightful so far. Roger that. Well, I suppose I'll go grab a bite of those yummy dishes. No, we are underwater and such. But after with a big sport like this, I feel a bit like a fish out of water. Hehe. <laughs> What's that? A joke? Not a fan of that joke. Okay, here's a good one. Why did the moray come to see us off? Because it was feeling a little ill. <laughs> Please stop. Nothing? Wow, tough crowd. Okay, no more funs. I can tell you're giving me a, a fishy look. <laughs> we love you, Mr. Brown, but don't ever do that again for God's sake. No, you made me do it. You made me do it too. No. Oh. <laughs> look what I've done. Oh dear. Now you did it. Don't worry, we'll help you pick everything up. Is everyone alright? I accidentally knocked the cart over. Everything's under control now. Please, excuse my clumsiness. Please, think nothing of it. I beg your pardon for having left it so close to the table. It's okay, it wasn't a big deal. Let me move it so, you won't get, so it won't get in your way again. Well, time to go. Enjoy your meal. Uh, sure, thank you. I'm just going to shuffle off awkwardly, slightly ashamed. By the way, I wanted to ask, what are your plans for later? The schedule looks rather peculiar. I haven't, I haven't decided yet. I'm up for anything if you may find interesting. Me too. I fulfill my promise to make the most of this trip. That's the spirit. But first, we have to eat this delicious food to replenish our strength. Munch, munch. Crunch, crunch. Delicious. Look at that little school bell with a train. I go. I'm stuffed. There's no end to your ridiculousness. I wish you eat both of the both of the main courses. They both look so tasty. I didn't want to have to pass up on one of them. Well, I guess you got your just desserts. That's what happens when you are a greedy guts. Oh. With the bright side, if you become rounder, you look more like one of your dear bloomins. Oh, I wouldn't mind that at all. Okay, respect. <laughs> I'm stuffed. Everything was delicious. It was. I'm really looking forward to dinner now. I thought undersea, undersea landscapes were the main chair with the travel, but it looks like the food is also a strong contender. Yeah, this is great. They have everything covered. Vegan, halal, and kosher menus are available too. Hmm. Apparently the courses were designed by a three-star Michelin check. Chef. You mean like Dominique Crien? Not sure if it was her, but yeah. There's no wonder it was so tasty. It's a gorgeous meal. I wish there was a, some way to get it on sliced bread. Just eat that and look at the sea all day long. Oh, you can! We call it... Smorgastarta in Sweden! Smorgastarta! Oh. It's like a sandwich cake with mixed salad filling, but you can stuff it with anything you want. There's no party without them. Smorgasbord? Tarta. 
Asta. That's... I like that. Come on, Astrid, stop talking about your glutton fantasies like they're real meals. We call that Sanduchon in South America. See how they're making it up? Goodness gracious. Okay, so... It feels like... It seems like, uh... Named characters get labeled as such in the chat. While other... Random students just get, like, handles. Which is a neat touch to incorporate more people into this. I like that. Oh, I wouldn't like that at all. I think I'm talking about Blue Winds to cheer her up. <laughs> so what's the plan for this afternoon, then? I haven't looked at the schedule yet. We should consider our options and sign up for the most promising activities. Take a look at, let's take a look at the brochure. Day 1 schedule. 8 p.m. Pacific Ocean. A look at the fauna. 4 p.m. Facial beauty. Goodbye, cucumber. Hello, sea cucumber. Oh no, do not put a sea cucumber on your face. 5 p.m. Decorative graphs. Oh no. Theater and show. Mollusk's, Mollusk Sisters live concert. Mewtime Holic. Whoa. Funky. Who's the wizard that came up with these things? Irene said that the schedule was rather peculiar. I certainly wasn't expecting this. I don't know. It looks interesting to me. Can't wait to see the Mollusk, mollusk Sisters live. Their electro flamenco style, when they use muscles as castanets, seems quite innovative. Well, to start with, we should attend the first panel talk, which is the most, uh... Oh, dear. What was that? Maybe the talk began already? Don't be silly. It came from the other direction. Let's take a look. Maybe someone was hurt. There's a girl on the floor, shaking. Why, why is she in so much distress? Are you alright? She can speak. She only points inside the room in front of us. But... The door is open. There inside, the body of a man is lying across the bed with a large red stain on his shirt and blood pooling around him. Mr. Shepard! No... Oh. in part of the schedule, right? Please, tell me this is a joke. What the hell happened here? No, this can't be happening. Why? It's not the first time I've seen a dead person, but the context this time is very different. This time it's serious. No word like that doesn't grasp the severity of the situation. What should we do? Should we look for help? I think we can do for him now, but... Ranko! Ah, sorry. Oh, Ranko, this isn't the time to falter. Wake up. Let's get out of here, we can't contaminate the scene. We need to find the teachers and the nurse ASAP. Hey, did you see anything? Who did this to Mr. Shepard? I... I knocked the door, then... I found him like that. You think there's any way to save him? Please, tell me there is. The teacher's a bloodstain on his chest. Looking at the hole in his shirt, he was probably stabbed with a knife or something. The wound itself doesn't seem too deep, but it pierced his heart. You don't need to be a medical expert to see that his death was likely almost instant. The crowd is starting to gather and peek in. It doesn't seem like the time for an interrogation. We need to seal this place up before panic starts to spread. What are you all doing here? What's all this ruckus about? Miss Marple! Togawa, Larson, I demand an explanation. Sorry, but it's better you see for yourself. We just got here. Frank, come with me. Let's see what the new mischief they've gotten up to. What new mischief they've gotten up to? Ah, uh, yeah, it's coming. L Lawrence! No! Holy mother of... What happened here? This girl is the one who found him. We came right after we heard her scream. Frank, don't just stand in there. Seal the... Seal the area and go look for Mr. Adams right now. And you, the one on the floor. Come here immediately. You're going to tell me what happened here. Let's go, girls. You heard Miss Marble? <sighs> yes, Mr. Brown. Miss Marble looks really angry right now. If she clenches her fists any harder, she might hurt herself. Come on, Ranko. Let's get, let's get some fresh air. I know Marble wants us out of the way, but we have to get back to the bottom of this case. Think we can find out who did it? Whatever it was, they must have just gotten dirty after pulling out that weapon. Let's ask the rest of the girls. Maybe they saw something. 
What is most right now is fighting the culprit before panic starts to spread. Someone was murdered, and we don't know if the rest of us are in danger, too. We have to figure out what happened before things get even more out of hand. Are you okay? Yeah, it's just... What a terrible thing to do. Who would want to kill Mr. Shepard? No idea, but there's no way I can sit on my hands after seeing that. I promise we'll find the culprit. Whoever they are, they will pay for what they've done. Every act has a consequence. You don't remember seeing anything unusual, then? I'm just... No, I don't think so. We were eating and then stayed here chatting for a bit. I don't remember seeing anything out of the ordinary. Understood. Thanks for your help. Sorry for taking up your time. Not at all. I hope you find something soon. We began our query by the dining car. The rumor is true? Mr. Shepard is dead? What? When did that happen? A while ago, there was a crowd of ruckus in the corridor. It was found by one of the seniors. Goodness. No, Mr. Shepard, I liked him a lot. He was such a good teacher. Who did it? Does anyone know who the culprit is? No idea. I have someone in mind, though. I can guess what you're thinking about. Will they let us enter, will they let us enter Japan with a dead body on board? It's not like we're bringing him with us for fun. Well, he has his passport with him, at least. I don't think he'll be needing it anymore. Ifa? Oh. That is not necessarily true. It may be requested depending on the country. In 1974, Egypt sent Ramses II's body to France for them to restore it. However, French law dictates that any person, dead or alive, must be carrying a valid passport to enter the country. The Egyptian authorities had to issue a passport with a pharaoh's photo so he could enter legally. Uh, I don't think Teach's case is comparable to a th with a 3,000-year-old mummy. What was an interesting piece of trivia. Are the rumors true? Mr. Shepard's dead? Here we go again. I keep breaking news. It wasn't long before news of Mr. Shepard's murder had spread like wildfire. Beef had blended with dis disbelief amongst those present here. Now none of the girls we spoke with provided any interesting information that could be useful in finding the culprit. Hey, Ranko, do you think there really is someone who might know something? What I think is that we won't get anywhere if we don't ask any questions. There must be someone who knows about Teach's last moments that saw someone go to his room. I'm not sure we'll be lucky enough to find someone like that. Well, look at that. I think I just found one such person. Hey, Valen. Huh? We stayed here after lunch. I have an idea around what time Mr. Shepard left. What's this? And now you're playing sleuth? I think you're a little old for that. We'll learn about the string of events between Teach leaving his car and his body being found in his room. Could be quite relevant. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I like your little friend. She wouldn't take her eyes off him. Who are you talking about? Irene, who else? That moron couldn't stop looking at him at lunch. I think you would close your stupid investigation soon if you went straight to asking her. I'm sure she's the one who killed Teach. That's a very serious accusation. What makes you think so? Oh, come on, are you pulling my leg? Don't you get it? He was laser-eyeing Teach the whole time during lunch. I'm surprised she didn't stare an actual hole into his face. Ditched Irene for those seniors and she took that the wrong way. Then she got the typical pang of jealousy and snapped at him. Classic revenge. I would laugh at the cliché, but were this such a tragic event. You don't have any proof of what you're saying. Please don't give me that. Everybody knows about their relationship. They even agreed to meet after lunch. Oh, this is pretty clear to me. How are you so sure? Just before leaving. Mr. Shepard excused himself, saying that he had a date waiting for him. Who would that be if not your slutty friend? Oh, jeez. It's obvious they met in his room, argued, and then she lost her marbles. That contradicts what you said before. What? You said you weren't paying any attention to him, but it seems to me that you were actually pretty watchful of his every move. Maybe you even dared to follow him after that. For all I know, you're as, as suspicious as Irene is. Come on, Ranko. Listen, don't get me mixed up in your stupid delusions. 
If you want to fool yourself into thinking I'm the murderer, then do as you please. I'm just telling you what I saw and what I think. Understood. Let's go, Astrid. We have all we need here. I'd be careful if I were you. I mean, it's a psycho. You should keep her locked up somewhere to prevent more tragedies. If I were you, I would take more care to hold my tongue. You could die from your own poison. <laughs> I enjoy your sass, R Ranko. Uh, you are delightful. <laughs> Did you really think it was Irene? Don't listen to that sourpuss. Taking advantage of the situation, using it to shed a bad light on Irene. It's nothing to provoke, nothing to prove any of what she said. We should keep asking questions about Mr. Shepard's last movements. I think so, too. I don't want to mistrust a friend. I'm sure we'll find the truth behind all of it if we keep, if we keep at it. Yeah. I don't want to suspect Irene either, but it's true. She didn't seem very pleased about being ditched so ex unexpectedly. If the relationship everyone talks about is real, I wonder how far she would go if driven by jealousy. After all, is heartbreak not one of the more common motives in murder cases? Some seem like they wouldn't hurt a fly, but end up committing terrible crimes when they lose their minds. It's hard to know how far one may go, no matter how well you know them. Hey, isn't, th isn't that that girl from before? The one in the corridor? Hmm? Yeah, she is. We couldn't ask her about what she saw back then. Let's not waste our chance now. <laughs> uh, do, do, do you need something? Well, we're the ones who found you when you screamed. Oh, sorry for not recognizing you. I'm sure you understand that he wasn't paying much attention to who was nearby, considering the circumstances. Absolutely, that was quite a frightening experience. Do you feel better now? Uh, yes, thank you. I usually keep a cool head, but this was a pretty heavy knockback. I got absolutely overwhelmed. Recovered a little now, though. Glad to hear. I mastered, by the way. This is Ranko. We're sophomores in Mr. Brown's class. My name is Clarice. Clarice Rossellini. A pleasure. I'd like to ask you about what happened in there. I already explained what I know to Miss Marble. There's not a lot to, I can say, actually. Any detail could be instrumental in understanding this case. Let's see, I was eating lunch with here and here with some friends, and was, we called Mr. Shepard over to eat with us. He scored a three-pointer by accepting our offer, and we had a nice time chatting with him. Then he left just before dessert came because he had to meet with someone. I wanted to talk with him in private, too. I thought it was better to wait a little so he'd let you could finish what he had to do. Then he made a sprint for his room after after a bit and knocked on the door. Thought maybe he left because nobody answered, but then I saw that the door wasn't locked and I tried to open it. Once I found him inside, I was so scared that my legs gave out. It's like the other team scored a touchdown in the last quarter. Ah, sports puns. Three-pointer, sprint, touch who? I couldn't understand half of these things you just said. The thought of playing football makes me tired. <laughs> it's sport lingo. You should know these words. It's pretty obvious you don't play any sport. Mensare incorpore, incorpore sano, right? Yeah. You have to move to be fit. Lingo is just a compliment. The important thing is to play a sport that gets you in shape. Home run! Goal! Uh, Iponse o enage? Uh. Iponse o enage, by the way, is a, a judo throw. Hmm. I have to think of a better catchphrase. That wasn't even bogey level. Just take it step by step. S uh, s sorry. What the heck are we doing right now? <laughs> this is all I can tell you. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. Wait, you would explain why you wanted to talk with Teach? Oh, right. Don't tell anyone, okay? I've been playing all sorts of sports since I was a kid. My dream is to become a pro. Up until now, I've won several tournaments. And I'm proud to be pretty good at every sport I've tried. Recently, I'm going through a little slump with tennis, and I'm not really my, my best. If things go on like this, I'm afraid my grandma might get provoked that I won't be able to keep studying at St. Joaquin. Is that why you went to see Mr. Shepard? To ask him for help? Yes, he's the one that... That was the one leading the PE department. I thought maybe if I had talked with him, he would support me in case things went south. I didn't expect the match to end like that. Marble thinks I might be, be related to his death somehow, but I just entered the court at the wrong time. I swear by the grave of Babe Zaharius! Uh. 
I have no idea what that is, but... I'm pretty sure you had no motive to harm Teach at, at all. Oh, ba Babe Didrikson Zaharius. American athlete excelled in golf, baseball, basketball, track, and field. Ah. Influence here. Oh, nice. Uh, won two gold medals in track and field. Turned to golf. Won 10 LPGA major cha- Wow. God dang. Thank you for telling us what happened. No problem. I just hope the truth comes to light and a fair refereeing is carried out. I'm sure it will. The important now is to keep our spirits high and not get disheartened. Set! Bullseye! Meh. Men. No. Corte. I'm not 100% sure about this one, but I'm pretty sure it's Kendo related. Keep working on it. Getting closer, Ranko. She's trying. Those two wear me out. So, what do you do now? I think we're going to find out much more around here. It seems like a good time to visit the crime scene. Huh? Miss Marble said going near the teacher's room is strictly forbidden. She also said we should stay clear of this case, but here we are. We have to get a good look inside the cabin. There must be some clue that can help us unravel this mystery. We arrived at the teacher's room. Train staff took their body away, but the idea of seeing this place again is putting me on edge. Make sure you want to go in. There's no other way. I'm sure we'll find a clue inside that'll be key to working out who the killer is. We have to be brave. What if we get caught? Come on, don't chicken out now. Worst comes to worst, I'll take full responsibility for it. Oh. I'm a little nervous, too, actually. There's no time for fear. We must find the truth. Let's go. Hmm? My, my. What do we have here? One, two. Yeah. Hello, little mouse. Are you trying to sneak in? Who is this? She me in a hug when I was totally off guard. The perfume is really strong. It's making me lose consciousness. That sharp gaze reflects the danger I'll be exposed to if I dare to faint. Jeez, that was scary. Are you a friend of Ranko's? Friend, my foot. Can't you see your predator face? A friend? Oh, no. We can, we can really get friendly. We can get really friendly if she wants. And for the into young girls, but I don't mind making an exception. That's concerning. H-E-L-P-N-E. -E. Please don't tell anyone that you saw us. We don't want to get scolded. What grief. Sarah's room just doesn't stop getting visitors today. What do you mean? I came back to my cabin for a little after lunch to rest a little, and I noticed some girl going in. The body was found some time later, and everyone started crowding the place. What a ruckus. Wait, are you saying you saw the last person to see Teach before he was murdered? Hmm, yes, maybe. That's a fantastic clue. Please, tell us what you saw. Should I? I don't even know your names. Why should I tell you anything at all? You're all right. Sorry. My name's Ranko, and this is my friend Astrid. Hi! That's better. My name is Christine. A pleasure. Please, tell us all you know about that girl. All right, what's going on on the web? Shepard's death really blows. Yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. You don't have some uplifting news? Anything to distract us would be nice. Oh, I maybe have, may have something. Tell us, tell us, today. It's my birthday. Woo, happy birthday! Have a good one! All the best! Thank you, thank you. Why didn't you mention it before? Let's have a party in the dining car right now! Let's go! I'm saying it now to distract us a bit, but the truth is I don't like to celebrate it. Huh? Why not? Yeah, it's great. You get to eat cake till you burst, and then everyone treats you like the star of the party for a day. I don't know. Maybe like it's an artificial celebration made to stimulate the economy. Boo, party pooper. But honestly, fair. If you don't like to celebrate your birthday, that's okay. Do what makes you happy on your bed and you're on your day. 
just like all the other celebrations. What about the greeting card industry? Those poor workers need to eat too. I know, but you're so weird. Okay then, no party, no presents. Who said anything about no presents? Oh. Well, <laughs> you can't have you can't eat your cake and not have your cake. Please tell us all you know about that girl. I will. If you let me have a little nibble on your ear. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, what a shame. Anyway, there's not much I can do to help. The girl was all the way back the other end of the corridor, so I didn't pay much attention to her. I think she was a freshman. She got into Shepard's room, that's for sure. I heard his voice welcoming her. Uh, freshman. You look pretty interested. Can I ask what this is all for? I'm trying to learn more about Teach's murder. I want to know who could do such a terrible thing. Got it. So you are, Detective Mice. Then I'll leave you to your inquiries. If you were to listen to some advice from your senior, it's that there's no use crying over spilled milk. The police will solve this case once you're back on land. Should you spend your time enjoying the rest of the trip? Don't you care at all about Mr. Shepard's death? Don't you want the murder to... Murderer to pay for what they've done? Honestly, I couldn't care less. As I said, it's not our job. Huh. Thought there was an actually nice person behind that femme fatale acting, but now I see there's only a heartless doll. Sorry for bothering you, but we waste our time on what we think is morally correct. Look, kiddo, don't try to judge me after just five minutes of chatting. Get on your high horse real fast, even though we literally met each other only a moment ago. Maybe you should get to know other people for better before getting up so big-headed and thinking you have the right to condemn their opinions. Especially when they are trying to give advice in good faith. Certainly with a gaze so sharp that my body rejects the thought of giving a reply. He's got me completely paralyzed. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I went a little too far. It's okay, don't worry. I like people with a temper. That was an interesting turn of attitude. A strong personality makes people taste better. Ah, yes. Tasting good. An essential trait for human beings. Well, time to go. Be good and don't get into trouble. Wait, Christine! Hmm? Can't help but wonder. I know she was far away, but do you remember if that girl was kind of short and long-haired? Yes, I think so. But I can't say for sure. I wasn't really paying much attention. I'm going to go back to my classmates now. Adieu. Riker, what you just asked? Were you thinking about... Yes. Don't want to suspect Irene, but that's where our facts are pointing. All things considered, I think it's only fair that we ask her directly. Not because I think that she's guilty, but to clear any of our doubts. She's our friend. She deserves honesty and an explanation of our concerns. If she didn't have anything to do with this, then we can defend her from any blame in the future. What if she lies to us have to lead us astray? And in the end, we will learn the truth, and she will pay for it. I'm not going to cover up for murderer, even if she is my friend. Every act has, uh, has a consequence, right? I know, but even so, it would be really sad if things ended that way. Let's pray that it doesn't come to that. This won't be a nice meeting. I hope she understands why we are doing this. Ready? Hey, hey. So it's true you don't play any sports? Uh, I'm sorry to make up as a shock to you, but not even as a sports freak. I get that. We do have PE at school. Don't you have any favorites? Well, when I was in grade school in Japan, I did some kendo. Uh, cool, then you are indeed a fellow sportswoman. No, not really. My teacher had such lofty aspirations, like turning us all into the new Setsuo Kobayashi, but I had other goals in my mind. Oh. Like, never doing anything that requires physical effort. Oh, sorry to disappoint. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, kind of message, I'm kind of messaging you and hope I can inspire you to do some exercise. Wait, how did you get my number? Oh, Astrid gave it to me a while ago. <laughs> Young nosy brat. She said it was so that I could reach you if something useful came to my mind. But then again, I could have looked it up in the group chat. That airhead has no right to be spreading my number. Hey, you don't need to badmouth me. What? How did you get in here? As one who created this group? Hmm. <laughs> you two are such a riot. This trip can't be over fast enough. She gumpy. She gumpy. Ready? Well, wait a second, I need to calm myself a little before going in. 
just going to talk. No open heart surgery today. I know, but come on, knock on the door. You're so bossy when you're anxious. I'm coming. Hey guys, what's up? I want to talk with you for a moment. Would that be okay? Yes, of course. Come in. Hi. Uh, hello there. Stop shaking, you goof. What? Uh, are you okay? You're looking a bit pale. Yeah, no, it's nothing. I'm totally fine. Totally not going to accuse you of murder or anything. Listen, we have something to ask. Maybe it's good to have Lena here, too. Uh, me? Uh, what is it? You probably heard about Mr. Shepard already, right? Yeah, what an awful thing. Please tell us what kind of relationship you had with him. Uh, oh, was that all? I know there's lots of rumors, and I admit I'd been spending some time with him lately. So I understand where they came from, but there was nothing going on between us. He was a teacher. A relationship with a student, especially with such an age gap, wouldn't be right. The only reason we spent time together was because he trusted me to help him with some of the classwork. Tutoring in his job in the PE department, he had barely any time to take care of those things, so he asked me to handle them when I had time. Nothing serious, just monitoring attendance and managing equipment, that's all. So he won't hurt that he didn't eat, us, eat with us at, at lunch as he promised. No, of course not. He had no obligation to. He was free to eat with whoever he wanted. I was under the impression that there was something more, so that you, you couldn't stop looking at his table. Oh, what do you mean? Won't be around the bush, and you have every right to be mad if you think I'm being disrespectful. Me and Astrid have been looking for clues about who could have killed Mr. Shepard. People think that you're the one who murdered him, driven by a fit of jealousy, and to be honest, we have yet to find anything going against that idea. I'd even say it's the one that best fits with the facts we have at hand. That's why we're here, to make sure you weren't involved in the crime. You never do something like that. You never hurt anyone. It's true, it wasn't Irene. I know. I want to believe in you, that's why we're here. We need you, we need you to explain what you did after lunch so we can cross you off, our, off the suspect list. Do, do we have a suspect list? It's just a figure of speech, it'll ruin the mood. I, I know it may hard to be believe after everything you said, but I agreed to meet, I agreed to meet with Teach. Talk about some of the big activities our class would do during and after the trip. If there was some time before our meeting, I took a shower to relax a little. You know, the commotion just as I got out, and that's when I learned about what happened. Can Lena confirm this? N no. I came back to the dining hall to save us some seats for the panel at 3 p.m. I left Irene just as she'd gotten to the shower. It means you have no one to validate your alibi. N no, I suppose not. Darn, that makes things more complicated. Don't worry, we believe what you're saying. What can we do? This is not the best of scenarios. Right now, we don't have anything to prove Irene's innocence. Luckily, the only evidence against her is circumstantial, so any accusations would be pointless. As it is, there's just gossip and vague feelings. Uh, she's only as guilty as our, we ourselves could be. The goal right now should be to find any leads that take us in a different direction. Should we keep asking the girls for other, the other girls for any new pieces of information? Nah, I don't think we're gonna get any more anything more about the Shepherd's move, bits. I can live nearby. Can't we go out these 24 hours without anyone trying to give us a heart attack, for Pete's sake? There's some girls gathered in front of the restroom. Don't tell me. Hey, what happened? Was anyone hurt? No, just that a friend of mine put a knife covered in blood in that trash can. Ah, uh, could it be? Let me see that. Yeah, the blade and stain matched each wound. Well, sure, this is the murder weapon. How awful. If you report this to Mr. Brown, he'll know what to do. Well, Ruckus, don't we have enough problems at the moment? Deja vu. I've just been in this place before. Miss Marvel! You again? Do you always have to be in the most troublesome places? I assure you, if there's anything we're trying to avoid, it's that. Though so far, we haven't been very successful. What is it now? Go just found this knife in the trash can. The size and the stain suggest that it's the same used to stab Mr. Shepard. Darn. Frank, where's that goof when you need him? Listen, I'll take care of this. We should need to stop meddling around and go back to the dining hall. This is none of your business. We were... No ifs, ands, or buts. I have enough problems right now. You should probably go. 
girls, are you okay? What happened? This just got more complicated. They found the knife Mr. Shepard was murdered with. It was in the trash can. Oh my. This seems like a strange place to dispose of a weapon. I think the killer might have thrown it in here in a rush, as, so as to not stand out. We should ask if someone saw anybody coming here around that time. Hey, Ranko. Everybody's looking at Irene. Her cabin is just next door. I can imagine what everyone is thinking. So we'll definitely add fuel to the fire. Actually, it's almost dinner time. We should get back and look for a seat. See you there. And the cosmic ballet goes on. Things don't look promising. I only managed to clear things with Irene. The murder weapon is just found just next to her room. If there was still anybody defending her, I'm sure they are second-guessing themselves thanks to this new development. There is going to be a bit awkward. Hello, Katya. I know everybody here has a marine theme and all, but couldn't we have some variety in the food at least? I was really craving good steak today. Ditto. And ditto is all shellfish. Nothing actually. Not actually a fan of those thingies. The first men to eat them had to be really desperate. I mean, who looks at a crab and things? You know, that huge armored spider looks delicious. Let's grab a bite. You knew this trade's theme full well. Don't look down on the food. Menu's full of dishes you probably won't need anywhere else. Try to enjoy the variety. Here comes a goodie two shoes. Come on, prayers, try to fit in for once. Can't believe you actually don't know how to have fun. Maybe you can give me some advice? Well, in times like these, always ask yourself this question. What Josephine Baker do? You want me to look for a cheetah? Kinda difficult given where we are. We could always become a spy for the French government. Not the easiest task to achieve. Just to be sure, wearing a banana costume is out of the question, right? Let's get back to dinner, please. Oh. Last present, she's trying so hard. It was going to be a bit awkward. Everyone seems sure that Irene is the culprit. It's going to be near impossible to convince them otherwise unless we do something soon. So what's your plan? Well, we were interrupted before. I think our top priority right now should be to do whatever it takes to sneak into Mr. Shepard's cabin. Huh? You still want to go in? I'm sure there's some sort of clue in there that can lead us to the killer. Nobody will miss us if we go now. Let's make the most of this opportunity. Why? Why now that we were about to go and eat? Come <laughs> on, stop your whining. Follow me. This time we're going in for real. Are you ready? This reminds me of the time Bloomin' Papa was investigating who ate the apple pie. That Bloomin' Mama had just cooked. I was wondering when you'd bring up Bloomin's again. I'm being serious. It was quite a mystery, you know. Oh, yeah? How'd it end? He actually ate it himself before taking a nap and completely forgot. <laughs> Classic Bloomin' Papa. <laughs> Are you implying that we're the murderers here? Of course not. That would be highly anticlimactic. Besides, I'm a little forgetful, sure, but I would absolutely remember if I killed someone. Especially the way I did it. Sometimes you say the darkest things without even realizing. What do you mean? Doesn't matter. Let's go in. All right, here we are. Finally inside. We have to make the most of this visit. I mean, fate depends on it. Be fast, we don't have much time. Wake up! What are you doing just standing there? No, it feels like something is missing. Something is missing? I feel like things aren't the same as when we were here the first time. Don't get cryptic on me. I probably rummaged around a little bit when they took Tage's body away. Let's start searching already. That must be it. It does feel like there's something on the desk. It wasn't there before. Nothing here. Did you find anything? No, nothing useful. What now? I guess I'll have to give up. Time to extract the accept the feet and think of a new about a new line of investigation. Let's get out of here for now. The last thing we want is to get caught. And they were promptly caught. Togawa! Yikes! I take my eyes off you for a second and you you and you vanish without a word. I'm fed up with you two. What the heck were you doing in there? Well I've told you over and over again to stop meddling. This incident is serious enough on its own. 
I don't need you to keep sticking your nose everywhere and contaminating the crime scene. Have you lost your mind? You don't understand, Miss Marble. You have been investigating and learned a lot about Mr. Shepard's last movements. Uh, huh? It's true. We talked with some of the students and they told us their statements about what they saw after lunch. Then you have information of interest. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if you'll find it to be relevant or not, but I think it might help solve the mystery. Okay, I'm going to do my best to contain the violent thoughts I'm having right now and listen to what you have to say. It's like curiosity is more powerful than fury. You have to spill the beans to get out of this crime. This one. Let's see. First, Clarice Rosalini told us that Mr. Shepard agreed to meet with someone after lunch. Knowing that he was busy, she decided to wait for him to finish his business before going. She knocked on the door, then went in when she realized it was open, finding the body inside. I know that already. She told me herself after we arrived. Is that all you have? Actually, neither senior claims to have seen the person Mr. Shepard met with. As there was so little time between this meeting and Clarissa arriving at the cabin, there's a good chance that this person was the last one to see Mr. Shepard alive, and also, they are the one who killed him. She was a freshman, it seems. Wait, this is quite shocking. If she was a freshman, that takes a lot of names off the list. Are you, are you suggesting you know who the last person to go into Lawrence's room was? I don't know for sure, but it seems like it was our friend I mean make Oh, no. I know they had plans to meet and talk about some of the activities their class would be doing as part of the trip. Now she claims she was taking a shower at the time of the murder and hadn't yet gone to meet him. I suppose, complete and utter honesty. There's nobody to back up her alibi, but we want to believe what she's saying. She's our friend, and we know she'd never do anything like this. The last person to go to Mr. Shepard's room had to be somebody else. Understood. Let's let the mull over. I should go this time, but I don't want to have to repeat myself again about meddling in this. I made myself clear. Yes, ma'am. I get back to your room. I'll be lights out soon. Did we do the right thing, telling her about Irene? We didn't have a choice. Lying wasn't an option. I just hope this doesn't make things more difficult than they already are. By the way, I hate you now. Huh? Do you mean because of the scolding? Sorry, I said, no, I said I, I would take responsibility, but... No, not that, for bringing up Irene. Oh, because you made us miss dinner! Yeah, that's what you're pissed about? Uh, sorry, I have some cookies in our room. You can have them if you want. Most certainly will. I'm not going to leave you with a single one. Come on, let's go. A murdered teacher. A friend under suspicion. Not things were ugly enough, but the worst is yet to come. Next day, I had even more unpleasant surprises waiting for us. It was the worst and most frustrating day of my life so far. It's the end of the chapter. Oh no. Just checking the main menu, we are, in fact, on in the midst of chapter 2 of 5. I also, I also figured out how to save. <laughs> I somehow didn't notice this when I was poking around the settings earlier. Oh no, because I was doing that for the main menu, of course. I didn't actually check the settings menu in-game. Okay, so we safely saved. And we'll leave... our second day on the train where things have already gone so very wrong for next time. It's an intriguing mystery so far. The characters are honestly pretty charming. I appreciate that. But alas. Until next time, until then, I thank you for watching.